you can pipe it all the way around. Letting your swag go about so deep and continue around. Or you can break it off at each pin. It's not going to matter and it's not going to show. What will show is if your swags are different height. So watch that before you attach it. So I'm just turning my turntable as I do this, keeping in mind of my swags. Now I'm going to break it off so that you can see the other way that you can do it. I'm also going to check at this point if my swags are the same, and they are. All right, so I broke it off on the top. To connect it, just start your royal icing right there, where you broke off, and continue to pipe. Now this is a personal preference. Some people like to break it off at each pin because that way if one of these little swags break, it's only going to take that portion. Other people like to take it all the way around because you get a fluidity going and it's hard to grab that fluidity back sometimes. But that's up to you. Both will work. Neither will you be able to tell when you have the finished product. That's too low, I think. No, it wasn't. I was just being kind of... I'm just going to take my damp brush and take that off and break it right on the top there, like so, and get that all off. There we go. When you go to pipe your string work, you won't know which ones had went around and which ones I had to attach went from pin to pin. So like I said it really is a personal choice. I will tell you this is a very um, fragile artistic design. So keep that in mind that if you bump a pin with your hand or you pump, bump one of these swags, it will come crumbling down. Okay, so I'm going to stop pressure, bring it here, release, and let go. I'm going to take my little damp brush and take off that little tail because I don't need it. I'm just going to go around and make sure that everything is good. So now I would suggest letting this dry, oh, maybe 10 minutes. It is a zero, so it's not going to take that long. But you want it to be dry enough that when you start piping your strings on there, it won't break on you. So what I like to do is go make up my double zero while I'm letting it dry. I did color it red. If you're going to use any type of color in a design like this, you're going to want to use powdered food coloring. Um, the liquid will make your royal icing too wet and you'll have nothing but problems. Alright, so our royal icing strings with our zero tip is dry enough for us to bring in our double zero. I did number my parchment bag, which I didn't do with the zero, but as long as I have one numbered, I'm fine. So I went ahead and numbered it. You want to start in the center. You can pick any place between any of the pins that you want and start. You want to have good pressure. I find that if I pull out my string, it won't crinkle on me. And then once I get to the base, I'm going to release my pressure. Then I'm going to carefully, because I've got just a hair of royal icing under my string, take my damp brush and break off that little hair. Sometimes I don't get anything and sometimes I do. 
but you can use your little string as a guide and make your string even longer to break it off. Now you only want the width to be one string apart. So I touched that string, but he didn't move. Thank goodness. This is our first string, so that's fine. So again, we're going to start, get a nice connection, bring out our string, let gravity do the work, keep that pressure constant, come down straight, release your pressure when you get to your zero arch. Now keep in mind that these are still fairly wet so be really gentle if you have to go in and take off those little teeny hairs. Be mindful of where your pins are so that you don't hit them. You're going to want to keep your tip clean at all times. And again, we're going to come straight down, release our pressure, and use that string to break off our string. And I just realized I grabbed the zero, so I'm going to take that off. As you can see, that is a much thicker string. It came off pretty e easily. Let's try that again with the double zero. I'm going to just very, very carefully take a little scriber and remove that dot. Okay. And the reason I want to remove that dot is I don't want it to bow outward further than the other strings. So again, constant pressure. Until you get to your base, use it to break off. Take your dampened brush and try and scooch him over if I can. There we go. And we're going to continue to add on these strings. If you release your pressure too soon, that's why they break. Okay, so we're going to release our pressure and go under. Now I will go ahead and keep piping these little strings until my pin gets in the way, until I think that my, oops, my finger is going to hit him or hit it. It seems if anything annoys me, I call it an, it a he. And if I'm happy with it, I call it a she. I don't know what that says about me. Everybody's different. I prefer to pipe with a very small parchment cone because it gives me a lot of control. And it's easier on my hand. But I know there's a lot of people who like to use heavy, those um, featherweight, not heavyweight, bags and make them tight. And that's fine too. Whatever is your preference and works best for you, that's what you should pipe with. I also find that my rail icing lasts longer in these bags. Now I am taking this down a tad longer because the pin's in the way. So I'm going to remove the pin as soon as I remove that long string. 
and I'm going to go in with a bigger brush, I think. So she's starting to fray on me. I think I've told you guys before, I only had, I, the brushes that I used for royal icing have never been used on anything else. But that being said, because royal icing is the way it is, it frays your brushes and then you need to get different brushes. I don't want those little hairs getting in the way. And I'm deliberately slowly breaking him off so that I don't take the entire string with me. I'm going to go in with the little guy because he's the big one seems to be having some problems with his hairs. He's almost ready to come off. He's kind of stubborn, isn't he? Just kind of push him back. There we go. So now we're going to go ahead. I've got about one, two, three, six or seven strings on, I think. To remove your pin, now my fondant is still really soft, so I don't want to make this hole too big. You just want to pull down your pin, twist it out, and lightly remove it. Now there's a couple of things you can do with these holes. You can skip over and then go back with um, the same colored fondant and cover them. You can put a decorative piece of gum paste, like a petal or something there. I'm actually going to go back with, to, the double, to the zero tip and I'm going to pipe an upside down teardrop to look like a almost a poinsettia brack. So I'm going to pipe a ball and just go up. Like so. I'm probably going to do two of those so that it looks like we have a little bit of a pattern going on. You could do a heart, go the other way. But since this is for Christmas, I thought it'd be pretty to have these little red bracks. And I gave it a line inside so that it would look like it had a vein. And then you're going to continue to pipe your double zero string work for your Australian bridgeless string work until the other pin gets in your way. So each time the pin starts getting in your way, you're going to do the same thing. All right. So we are about at the halfway mark of our cake and we're going towards the highest point that we have on our design. You're going to want to keep your pressure constant at this point because it's going to be a little bit harder as you go up. Since you're going up gradually, you might not notice it as much. But you do want to keep that in mind when you're making your design. Because if your high point is too high for you to pipe, you're going to just be breaking strings all the way around and get frustrated. So if you don't want to go up to two and a quarter inches, you could do two. This is a four inch round cake you could even get away with one and a half inches you obviously wouldn't want to go much higher than two and a quarter because you don't want to go up too much past that halfway mark I went up a quarter of an inch past but you don't want the whole cake to be strings we're just going to take off that little bottom Just take your time. Don't let it wig you out too much. You'll 
You want to get a great connection at the top, but you don't want a gigantic like snowball up there. But a good connection so that you don't make it all the way down to the bottom. Have your little swag and find that your string breaks from the top. And that one's just a little bit wet. I don't want to move him, so I'm going to go after this one. The other thing I forgot to tell you is when you're going in to clean up your bottom, you could probably do a couple of strings depending on how fast or slow you are. Well, how fast you are. If they're a tad drier, they're easier to break off and you don't have to worry about moving your string. I think that pin's probably going to get in my way, so I'm going to try this last one. We'll see if the pin gets in my way. And we'll take them out. I don't like to leave too much of that residue of raw icing up there. I find I have a hard time getting it to connect to the cake. So if one of my strings breaks or I have a little mark up there because my connection wasn't too good, I will go ahead and just gently take it off. All right, so let's get that pin out of there. Again, you just want to gently pull down and pull out the pin. I'm going to turn my cake a little bit so I can cover that hole. I'm going in with my zero tip. And really all we're doing is making a dot, release, and swiping upward. Just like that. Just to cover the hole and give your eye something cute to look at. Like I said, this is a personal choice on what you want to cover those holes with. Eventually, if you get to the point where you really enjoy doing this, <clears throat> you can actually put believe it or not, pins in between your strings and pipe multiple um, bridgeless string work. That's for another day. The other thing is when you're first starting out, you probably don't want to start with a color like red. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Because it will stain if um, it gets on the cake where you don't want it. If you do find that you've like piped a little dot or a teardrop or whatever you're piping and you get too much, you get a little bit of red in there or you don't like what you piped, you can wait about 15 minutes, gently scrape it off. That way it doesn't stain as much. Sometimes it'll just flake right off. But I will tell you that that's a little bit dangerous because you could end up hitting your construction and the whole thing will come traveling down on you. So again, make your connection. This is my peak. Bring it down. And actually, I was wrong. This is my peak right here. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to see your scribed line.
I'm going to let him dry in the air for a second. Sometimes when they're really wet like that, they'll jump into another string and you don't want that to happen. I also find using a double zero liner brush for this works a little bit better than my five zero. I have less of a chance to get in there and break a string. And I did break him, so it's alright, I'll just take him off. We are going to be piping a little bit of a design over the tops of these strings. So if you have a string that you know you think you can fudge around because it's staying but it's broken, you're going to want to take it off because it'll break when you go to pipe in your design. And it's more difficult to fix a string in the middle of strings. It's possible but we don't really want to give ourselves that grief. We don't have to. Remember to come straight down, stretching out your icing. And if you notice that your spacing, like there I noticed that my spacing wasn't exactly the way I wanted it, so I was able to fix it before I let it go. Another neat trick that you can do is um, you can hold your string for a few seconds in the air and it will dry a little bit while you're piping. You don't want to hold it too long, but you can hold it a little bit. So I'm going to do one more string for you just so you can understand the concept of when we go to that high point. I'll continue piping and when we come back I'll show you how we finish this cake up. This little guy did not want to come off, does he? Now you don't want to leave these on too, too long because then it'll be almost impossible to snap them off and you'll have a long line that you won't be able to cover. So like I said, stretch your string out, let gravity help you, bring it down release pressure, and snap off. That one came out a little bit long, but that's okay. So now we're just putting a little border over the top. You want to be careful not to hit your strings. I'm just doing a regular heart border. You could do a teardrop and match your border on the bottom of the cake. But all we're wanting to do is cover up where we started our strings. And a heart is just two little teardrops swipe and down. So I'll finish doing that and I'll see you when I come back. So we have finally finished our bridgeless string work. And I went ahead and added some pressure piping flowers and leaves to the side and some holly leaves with berries on the top. For the pressure piping, there is a video tutorial on YouTube and I will make sure that there's a link in the video. I hope you've enjoyed being with me today to do our festive holiday cake.